Nut did, Jenny. She's out of her skull. Well, if it's Kathy on skis, I can believe it. She's pretty weird that way. Hey, where were you? You disappeared. Oh, I don't know. Once the sun goes down, it just gets too cold, and then the wind goes right through me. Yeah, well, that all depends. You know, the last time up, I met a really cute guy, and yeah. I gotta tell you, I had no trouble keeping warm. Incidentally, guess who he's up here with? Who? Your guy. Yeah, you didn't tell us Bill was coming up here this weekend. Very sneaky, holding out on us. I think she is holding out on us. Hey, I thought it was just going to be us this weekend. I mean, it's no big thing, but uh, that is what we said, is it not? That's what I heard. Well, I didn't tell him to come here. But you don't seem too surprised that he's here. I don't think she's surprised at all. Mm. Yes, I am. I don't tell him what to do. He does his thing, and I do my thing. Yeah, but generally, his thing is your thing, and uh, your thing is his thing. That's very mm. interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Ginny, what's wrong? Ginny, what is it? Hey. Hey, did you and Bill have a fight? No. Come on, we're your friends. You can tell us. What's wrong? Ginny, come on. Uh, I'm pregnant. Insight. Stories of modern man's search for meaning, freedom, love, insight. What does it mean to be responsible? It means to accept and live gracefully with the consequences of your own decisions, even when they're unpleasant. It means to respond fully to the world around you. And that means reverencing your own life and the lives of all other people. The life of the healthy and productive member of society is sacred, but so is the life of the mentally retarded, the senile, and the unborn. Reverence for human life in all its forms is the mark of the responsible human being. So what else did they tell you at the clinic? Well, they told me to come in for counseling, and then they made an appointment for me. What was their big advice? I don't know. I didn't make the appointment. I wasn't ready to talk about it. So you walked around for a week talking to yourself, trying to get your head together, like you were big enough to handle anything, love, right? Supergirl. Hey, lay off, Regine. You're not helping any. Hey, I wasn't trying to put her down. What else did the doctor say? How far along are you? About six weeks. That figures. What do you mean, that figures? Well, I remember that little uh, Saturday evening that you and Bill left early. Remember, you were all lovey-dovey when your folks were playing bridge at my house. It was really a cozy time on Mary Mac Avenue. That's right. At exactly 9.17, we got there. At 9.36, we took the spread off the bed. Bill was on the left side, I was on the right. At 11.17, we remade the bed. Bill smoked two cigarettes, I had one. He said good night. He left at exactly 11.45. Is there anything else you'd like to know about it? Wow. Are you ever uptight? Oh, come on. She has a right to be upset. Upset? Why should I be upset? After all, here I am. I'm 17. I'm supposed to be a senior in September. Prom's in November. By that time, I'm going to be out to here. I'm going to be big. I'm going to be really big on that dance floor. I'll probably have to have a specially constructed maxi made or something. Maybe I'll set a new style. I don't know. What does Bill say? Well, there isn't going to be any Bill. He isn't going to say anything. He's going to be with somebody else. I just know it. You don't know that. Oh, yes, I do. He's going to just kiss me off. I doubt it. Oh, yes, he will, and so will everybody else. I can forget about proms. I can forget about school. I might as well just drop out right now. No, you're not, Jenny. Oh, yes, I can forget about college, too. Oh, wow. This is really going to upset my parents. They really wanted this for me. They didn't get it for themselves, so they wanted it for me. I'll probably just wind up as a cashier in a car wash. You haven't told your parents yet, Jenny? 
Well, how am I going to tell them? What am I going to say? They've trusted me. They've always been proud of me. They're, you know, they're always bragging about me to their friends. How are they going to explain this to them? Their own darling little daughter, their own precious little girl. All she ever was was just a common little slut. Are you through? Well, you were up to your eyeballs in self-pity. If you really want to do something about it and not just cry, I can tell you what to do. It's very simple. You fill out a few papers. You lay out $150. You go in in the morning. You come home in time for dinner. It's perfectly safe. It's legal. You're back to normal, and nobody is any the wiser. Does anybody want another beer? Oh, she's 100% right. It's the only intelligent thing to do. Are you going to have trouble getting the bread? That is Bill's problem. <laughs> well, that's for sure. And at that, he's getting off very easy. Well, I guess that I'm just going to have to tell him then. Yeah, it's about time you grew up. Well, at least you're not going to have any trouble finding him. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hello. We brought some food. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Here's your coat. What happened to you? You were right behind me, and then you were gone. Oh, yeah. I sure was gone. I did a 360 and over here. <laughs> Wish I could have seen that. Yeah, well, stick around. I may be able to repeat it for Mara. Have you guys eaten? We've lots of stuff. Oh, we're fine. Fill up on chili and beans. Hey, speak for yourself. I got lots of room. Well, oh, come on. I'll show you what we've got. Oh, all right. Where's Ginny? She didn't feel too long. We went upstairs. She'll be down in a while. How about some cereal? Oh, sure. Do you want to talk to Ginny? Why don't you go on up? Kathy said you weren't feeling so good. Oh, I'm okay. Hey, what's the matter? Nothing's the matter. I just don't feel like talking right now. Is that okay with you? Sure, anything you want. I'll be downside having a beer. Bill, don't go. Please. Oh, Bill. Oh. Hey, Jenny. Jenny, what's wrong? You're not going to want to hear this. Try me. Well... Bill, I'm pregnant. You're what? Yeah, I, I am. Well, maybe you're not pregnant. Um, maybe you're just late. No, I had tests. Oh, wow. Yeah, wow. What happened? Uh, what about the pill? What about it? You weren't on it? No, I wasn't on it. No, we weren't doing anything, and I don't know, just, it just somehow happened. I didn't plan this. Did you plan it? Yeah, I know it just happened, but, Ginny, it just happened a couple of other times. What were you thinking, that you could never get pregnant? Well, I guess I just wasn't thinking. Oh, Ginny, I guess you just weren't. Well, I guess that goes for you, too. Now, don't you lay this whole trip on me. Hey, I just thought that would be something that you would take care of. I mean, it is your body.
Rick and me had it all set. We're going in together on this van. It's only 200 bucks a piece. I've been saving up. Oh, it's a nice van. Now this thing shoots that right in the head. <laughs> you know, poor Rick. He's really getting the shaft. He's been saving a lot longer than me. When he hears about this thing, he's going to blow like you would not believe. Bill, what are you trying to say? What I'm trying to say is that it takes bread for an abortion. A couple of hundred bucks anyway. You can't get the money from your old man. You don't have it. You know who that leaves? That leaves me. I got to come up with it. You understand now? Look, Bill, come on. Don't worry about it, OK? I don't need your money, and God knows I sure wouldn't want you to hurt poor old Rick. I know how important wheels are. Wheels are very, very important. Nothing's more important than wheels. Jenny, you don't understand. Oh, yes, I do. I understand perfectly. You need that van, and I don't need you. Let's split. Hey, what are you talking about? Everything's okay. Will you do me a big favor and just come on? Hey, do you mind? Were you coming back? Are you sure it's okay? Sure, we got all this space. Might as well use it. You can throw your sleeping bag down anyway. Okay, great. Yeah, I'll see you later. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Looks like it's hit the fan. I'm gonna put some coffee on. same. They want what they want, and after they get it, they don't give a damn who they got it from. <laughs> oh, don't think Rick is any different. Put a fire under him, and he'll go up and smoke, too. Oh, come off it, green eyes. I'm just warming him up. So I noticed. The point is, it is a big mistake to get too hung up on any one guy. Mm. The point is, Ginny's got a problem. We've got to help her solve it. Mm. Well, I'm ready to help. I can get hold of $50. I'm good for 50 Kathy. Sure, I'll kick in, if that's what Ginny really wants. What do you mean, if? You think she wants to carry this thing? People do sometimes. It's been known to happen. <sighs> well, sure, if they're married. Or masochistic. Or just too stupid to know any better. Come on, Kathy. All you're doing is confusing her. I'm not trying to confuse her, but you make it sound like she has no alternative. There is a choice, whether you happen to like it or not. Come on, Kathy. We're not living in the dark ages. Do you think that Ginny's an idiot? I think Ginny's a person. I think she's quite capable of making her own decisions. Mm. After all, it's her life and her future and her body that's involved. So why don't you butt out? I'd like to know what Ginny thinks and feels. So far, we've been doing all the talking and haven't even given her a chance. Fantastic. Are you finished? Yes. OK, Ginny, you have the floor. Go ahead. Well, I don't know. All I know that I was just having a good time and I didn't have to think. And now, it's just an awful lot to deal with. It's just a big mess. What's the mess? Well, I have a baby inside oh. of me. You ha no, you don't. You have a thing. You have a blob of protoplasm about that baby. I've never baby. heard anything so stupid. It's not a baby. It is not a baby. Well, whatever you call it, it becomes a baby. And I'm going to become an old lady, but not right this minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. We're getting sidetracked here. Jenny, you're forgetting one thing. That is that your first obligation is to yourself. I mean, you are already here in this world, right? You're alive. You're 17. You've got a future. You gotta think about that future. And there are other people involved, like your parents. I mean, you said it yourself. You pop a kid on them and you screwed them good, baby. I mean, and they're out of the 1950s and they've got all those hang-ups, so they're gonna blame themselves and they're gonna feel blamed by everybody else. Yeah. Really, Jenny, you gotta get it together. I mean, what does she want from me anyway? You know, if she just would have used her head, this thing never would have happened, right? Hey, listen, they're all like that. It's, it's fantasy time. I mean, they're all for jumping into bed, but they never think of the consequences. You know, it could happen to other people, but never to them. But she knows about the pill. I'll bet her mother's even taking them. Yeah, but her mother's got her guy. You know, maybe Ginny's not as dumb as you think. It's the oldest trick in the book. Oh, wait a minute. I mean, she has never come on that way. Yeah, but she has now. But it's stupid. I can't get married now. I've still got two more years before I get my degree. 
And that just gets you to the launching pad. And you gotta pick your company and really burrow in. If you get tied down, you can't maneuver. You know my brother? Well, he waited till he was 29. And that's why he's a vice president today. If you let Ginny or any other female get her hooks into you for the next 10 years, well, you can just forget about it, because you're done. Yeah, I guess you're right. The trouble is, they make you feel so damn guilty. You have no reason to feel guilty. I do a little bit. I mean, I've got to admit, I pushed her kind of hard. She'd never done it before. If I didn't know you better, I'd say you were hooked. Uh, Rick, the thing that bugs me is the way I left it. I spent a lot of time with her over the last six months. And it's just not right to bail out like that. Hey, listen, if you want to go back there, it's okay with me. Well, I mean, it'd be sacking out in the barn. What are you going to say to her? I don't know. I wasn't trying to make it harder for you. Yeah, I know. You're just trying to help. I just hate to see you ruin your whole life. I know, and I hear what you're saying, and uh, I know what you mean, and I don't know. It's just that I, this feeling that I have, like, like I have something alive inside of me, and I don't know, but how can you snuff out what's alive? You don't have to tell me about life. I'm for it. What kind of life? Suppose you do nothing and let this thing happen. Seven, eight months from now, you've got a baby. What kind of life is it gonna have? Have you thought about that? Well, I'm trying to. See, it's an either-or thing. Either you keep it or you give it away. Well, maybe I could keep it. Oh, terrific. The odd little kid on Merrimack Avenue. Teenage mother, no father. And who's gonna support it? Your folks? Oh, they'll love that. Oh, well, maybe somewhere along the line I might meet another guy. Sure, you'll meet a lot of them. Some of them are going to want to marry you. But who's going to want to take on another guy's kid? Good luck. Ginny, it just won't work for either you or the baby. And that's the way the world is, whether we like it or not. Well, people do adopt children. OK, so you do your thing for nine months go through the whole number, feeling pain, getting sick, all of it. And then what? Some stranger comes in, you hand over the bundle, and that's it. And you're left empty and with a broken heart. You never see the kid again. You never hear any more about him. And what about him? What guarantees do you have that he's going to get a good deal? Ginny, either way you face it, it's a bummer. Look, there are enough miserable, unhappy people in this world, right? So why add one more? Am I making any sense? Yeah, Sharon. Too much. Thanks. Please. I thought we already
Hey, Jimmy, that wasn't me. Did I hurt you? Well, what do you think? I'm sorry, I really am. <laughs> that stuff about the van was really stupid. Yeah, I care for you. Hmm. Jenny, I love you. I think we can put it back together. Well, is that what you really want? I said I love you, and I meant it. Now, look. I don't want you to take this wrong. I mean, I'm not saying this because of what happened... But why don't we get married? <laughs> Comes off kind of corny, doesn't it? Yeah, but it has a nice sound. Yeah, it does to me, too. But, Bill, I don't think you've thought about this long enough. This is... Hey, I've thought about it. And you're really together about it? Timmy, all I know is that it feels right. a great breakfast. Oh, yeah? Well, um, I think I'll have some right now, then. Yeah. Uh, Bill, why don't you go on ahead, and I'll meet you in a few minutes, all right? Well, I don't mind waiting. No, now you just go on, and I'll see you in a few minutes. I'll tell you what, I'll take your skis over and see you there in about 10 minutes. OK. All right. Mm, bye. Bye-bye. Operator, I'd like to make a collect call, area code 213. The number is 4941527. Jenny Lennox. Hello, Mom? No, I'm fine. Haven't broken a thing. Uh, is Dad there? Could you put him on the other line? Now, Mom, I'm fine. Hello, Dad? Oh, yeah, it's terrific. We had six inches of new powder. Mom, I'm fine. Well, um, what I have to say, it's not going to be easy, and uh, I know it's going to hurt you, and I just want you to know that what I've done is not your fault. You've been really, really good parents to me. Well, I love you, too, and that's why this is so hard. You see, I'm pregnant. Now, Mom, please don't cry. Yeah, Dad, it was Bill. Now, Dad, don't blame him. You don't understand. He's not that way. He wants to marry me. Yeah, he is a nice guy. Yes, that's right. I'm going to have the baby. I mean, I know I don't have to. I know there are ways to get rid of it if I want, but I don't. You see, Mom, the way I got into this, it was just left a lot to be desired. I, I've made a mistake. But, Mom, I can't make an even worse one, can I? I mean, I've got this life inside of me. It's just so beautiful. It just blows my mind. I've got a real, live human being inside of me. Yes, Dad, Bill's here. Now, wait. I've made another decision. I've decided that I am not ready to get married right now. 
Yes, I am serious. No, I haven't told Bill. But, Dad, it is not your decision. It's mine. Yes, I know it's not going to be easy, and I know there is a lot involved. Well, I love you, too, and I don't want a lot of people pointing fingers at you, so I'm going to be moving out till after my baby's born. Look, we'll talk about this when I get back, okay? Now, Mom, don't worry. Yeah, I'll be back tonight. All right, I gotta go. Love you. Bye. No, I'm fine, really. Come on. I know you're fantastic. But I couldn't be. I wasn't. Last year, nobody knew, but I was where you are. Only I went the other way. I had the abortion. Because I think it, because I thought it would be easier, but it wasn't. Every baby I saw reminded me of mine, the one that could have been. I dream about it, holding it, nursing it. Jenny, help me. <laughs> Insight is a production of the Paulist Fathers, a group of Catholic priests who seek to share the good news of God's love with all their brothers and sisters in the human family.